Diplomatic ties between the Philippines and Singapore were officially established on May 16, 1969. Singapore is a valued partner of the Philippines and a fellow ASEAN founding member. Over the years, the relationship between the two countries has strengthened in various areas like trade, investment, security, defense cooperation, cultural exchanges, and people-to-people -people connections. High-level visits between the leaders of both nations have happened, with the most recent being President Halima Yacob's state visit to the Philippines in September 2019. Economic ties have flourished, making Singapore the Philippines' fifth largest global trading partner and the largest within ASEAN. Singapore has been a significant source of foreign investments in the Philippines, and the tourism sector has been positive trends. Singapore is also the top tourist destination for Filipinos in ASEAN. Recently, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce in Singapore was established to enhance trade and investment providing support for businesses. Around 200,000 Filipinos contributing significantly to both countries' economic growth. Most of them are professionals and skilled workers, with others employed as household service providers. In this video, I'm going to talk about Filipinos who made Singapore, Singapore, or Filipinos who made Singapore the country it is today. The Singaporean nationalists who fought for independence in the 1950s and 60s were inspired by the great Filipino hero, Jose Rizal. For those who might not be acquainted with Jose Rizal, here is a brief overview of his life and contributions. Jose Rizal was a Filipino hero who lived during the end of the Spanish rule in the Philippines. Besides being an eye doctor, he became a writer and an important part of the Filipino propaganda movement. This group aimed for political changes in the Philippines under Spanish control. Because of his writing, Rizal was executed by the Spanish government or rebellion when the Philippine Revolution began, inspired by his ideas. Even though he was not directly involved in planning or carrying out the revolution, he supported its goals leading to the eventual independence of the Philippines. Rizal is widely seen as one of the greatest heroes in the Philippines. Filipino involvement in the Singapore film industry. In the late 1950s and 1960s, the film industry in Singapore, known as the Golden Age of Malay Film, saw the involvement of Filipino directors, such as Eddie Infante, Ralph Bayer, and even Lombardo Avellano, who directed a film called Sarjan Hassan. Ramon Estella directed 11 films for Cathay Keris and Shaw, including the well-known film Anak Potinianak, an internationally successful Singaporean film. They call her Kiliopatra Wong, came out in 1978 and was written directed and produced by Filipino filmmaker Bobby Suarez. Babes Conde, a Filipina, served as the director of the SAF Music and Drama Company for many years. She has been in Singapore since 1985 and played a crucial role as the musical director in various Singaporean musicals, including Dick Lee's Beauty World and Fried Rice Paradise. Additionally, Filipinos were responsible for constructing the historical dioramas in the Old National Museum of Singapore. Filipino artists and writers. The beautiful stained glass window in the Chapel of Singapore Art Museum, former St. Joseph's Institute, was created by Filipino artist Ramon Orlina. He also has a sculpture at the National Stadium. The political cartoonist Miel who has contributed to The Straits Times and has also written a comic book about Singapore, is also Filipino. Mel Prodincio Ma is a Filipino cartoonist and illustrator who earned the National Cartoonist Society Newspaper Illustration Award in 2001. He holds a master's degree in design from the University of New South Wales in Sydney. Formerly, he had worked as an editorial cartoonist for the Philippine Daily Express, 
which was once owned by Ferdinand Marcos. Later, he became the chief editorial cartoonist for the Philippine Star, a newspaper established in 1986. After Marcos's era, in 1992, Mel and his family moved to Singapore. In Singapore, he began his career as the assistant art editor for the Straight Times, the leading English language daily in Singapore. Currently, he serves as its senior executive artist. Alcaf Bridge at Robertson Quay wasn't always so colorful. It was painted in 2004 by the Filipino artist Basida Abad, who wanted to present it as the final gift to Singapore while she was dying from cancer. She showcased her artwork in more than 200 places globally, including 75 solo exhibitions, and her pieces are now found in public, corporate, and private collections in over 70 countries. In Thailand, a bad focus on the refugee crisis along the Thai-Cambodian border during the Cambodian-Vietnamese War, she visited refugee camps, worked in relief efforts, and spent time with refugees, journalists, and relief administrators. By April 1980, she exhibited the 24 painting series known as the Cambodian Refugee Series in Thailand. Abad received several awards during her career, with her most memorable being the Poem Award for Art in the Philippines in 1984. This award, traditionally given to men, caused controversy when she became the first woman to receive it. Despite criticism, Abad was proud to break the gender barrier. Mayo Martin, a Filipino, acts like a one-person arts magazine, providing extensive coverage on Singaporean theater makers, dancers, artists, and writers through his blog. For the past decade, he's an essential figure in the local art scene. However, when he released his poetry book, Occupational Hazards, in Singapore, the National Library hesitated to categorize it as Singapore literature due to his lack of PR status. Leandro Laxon, a Filipino architect, Leandro Laxon stood out among global architects when Southeast Asia was still developing its architectural community. In 1974, when the Urban Renewal Authority or URA was established, the Singapore Prime Minister emphasized the need for quality designers. He emphasized that Singapore should compete with Thailand and the Philippines in this regard. Many Filipino architects were hired to form a significant architectural firm in Singapore. Their goal was to secure URA's land parcel sales, and soon Filipino architects became prominent in Singapore. The URA's land parcel sales became successful, attracting investors and making it a competitive field. Filipino architects competed with Thai architects in these sales, influencing the National University of Singapore to enhance its school of architecture curriculum, resulting in the production of high-quality Singaporean architects. Theodore Chan, a Singaporean architect, said this about Filipino architects. There is so much talent in your country. What is sad is that the infrastructure, the institution and the government don't create enough opportunity for you to showcase your talent. So this is where the profession has to make concerted efforts to showcase the talent of Filipino architects. He remarked that the Philippines location in the Pacific Ring of Fire and in the path of over 20 typhoons every year, make the country a virtual geographical proving ground for creative architects. Filipino architects are definitely more expert in dealing with natural weather phenomena. We are blessed that Singapore doesn't have to experience these kinds of natural calamities. Can you think of other Filipinos who made Singapore the country it is today?